Welcome back to Amashiroi Recap. Today, I will recap Vermeil and Gold. The story begins in Ortiger Royal Academy of Magic. A boy named Alto Goldfield fails his summoning exam. If he can't make a contract with his familiar by the next day, he won't be able to continue to the second year. His childhood friend Lilia is cute. She was surprised to learn that Alto might remain in the first year even though he got perfect grades in every class. Alto tells her he still has time until the next day and will try one last time. He goes to the library for help. A book fell off the shelf and landed on his head. Alto was surprised that it was a book. Alto took the book home and followed the ritual in the summoning spell book. Hmm? A naked demon girl named Vermal was summoned. They formed a contract, and Vermal kissed him to drain his mana. She tried to seduce him, but Alto refused and told her to wear some clothes. Alto was confused about why the demon chose to serve him as a familiar because the demons they studied in history always destroyed humans. She tells him she was sealed in a book, and Alto freed her because Alto has powerful magic. Vermal decides to serve him as gratitude for freeing her. The next day, Vermal hides her horns and tail to pass as a human. At first, the teacher doesn't believe Vermal is familiar because no records show humans becoming familiars. But Vermal shows her boobs with the magic crest, so the teacher must accept her as Alto's familiar. Lilia was jealous of Vermal as she watched them from a distance. During class, Vermal sat on Alto's lap while showing affection. After class, Lilia went to Alto. She said she didn't like Vermal and challenged them to a duel. If Lilia won, then Vermal would stay away from Alto. But if Alto won, Lilia would obey one command from him. They had to go to the platform in the sky, and their duel was broadcast to all the students. Lilia summons her familiar Sylphide, a high-class wind spirit. Lilia combined her victory magic with her familiar, unleashing a powerful attack on Alto. Yes, Vermal directly attacked when the dust cleared. She used magic that aroused Lilia so much that all the students heard her sigh. Alto wins, so he orders Lilia to befriend Vermal. Then Vermal tells Alto that Lilia is in love with him, but he doesn't believe her. Vermal kisses him to replenish her mana and says she needs it, or she will disappear. She tries to seduce Alto again by saying there is a more effective way to replenish her mana, but Alto stops her and says a kiss is enough. The next day, everyone seems to see them as they walk to school. Alto tells Vermal not to draw attention. Suddenly, a dragon goes on a rampage, but Vermal stops it with a flick that sends it flying into the sky. The principal welcomes the students to the second year, and Vermal unwittingly attracts the boys' attention as they are curious about her boobs. The owner of the dragon that Vermal defeated and his older brother Rex are here to get even with Vermal. But when their attention is distracted, Alto sneaks up behind them and traps them in a crystal prison. Rex summons his familiar and breaks free. Rex is a fifth-year student and summons a dinosaur. Rex sends his familiar to attack, but Vermal increases Alto's mana, which allows him to unleash a much more powerful crystal magic attack and defeat Rex. When they returned home, Vermal asked Alto what he wanted, and Alto told her he wanted to be a great magician. Alto explained that in this world, there are four apprentice ranks, bronze, silver, and gold magician, but he aims to go further to become a platinum rank magician. Vermal approved of his dream and promised to help him achieve it. The next day, they and Lilia meet their friends Marcus and Cheryls. Marcus comes from a noble family and is impressed that Alto beat the fifth-year students. Their teacher appears and tells them the headmaster has called them to see him. The headmaster tells them that one of them will be the student representative. He gives them a special test. Whoever can retrieve the fairy flower from the forest will be the class representative. Marcus summons his familiar and rushes off, but a man-eating plant attacks Marcus, and Cheryl stays behind to help him. Meanwhile, the others continue to search for the flower and see it at the top of the mountain, but Cerberus guards the entrance. Lilia drinks an invisibility potion and plans to use it to sneak past Cerberus, but her clothes were unaffected. Lilia panicked that she would be naked before Alto, but she had no choice. As Lilia approached Cerberus, not all of his head hurt, and she was detected. Alto distracted Cerberus, who told Lilia to get flowers. Vermal appeared from above, unleashing her demonic powers, and there was a huge explosion. Lilia was able to pick up the flower, she brought it back to the others. She admitted defeat and offered to give it to Alto. 
but her ability was exhausted, and she became embarrassed and dropped the flower. The wind blew the flower away, and ended up in Charles's hands. Ultimately, Charles was the winner, and the others congratulated her. On the way to school, Vermal enjoyed eating crepe for the first time. Having been sealed for hundreds of years, she never had the chance to taste modern food. The students looked up to the sky. All the students admired the Dragon Rider's leader, Chris. Larkis explained how extraordinary Chris was. Aside from being the leader of the Dragon Riders, she was an executive in the student council and was one of the seven gold rank students in the school. Alto was amazed she already got a gold rank as a student. He hoped he could be like the student council president, who was said to be close to a platinum rank. Vermal told him it was possible while choking him. Lilia quickly pushed her away and the two argued about Alto as usual. Alto tells them not to make any more noise lest they get in trouble with the student council. Vermal tells him that she will beat them all, and Alto will get a gold rank in no time. As they walk, the student council appears before them, and Chris stares at Vermal, wondering who she is. Then Rex was beaten by Chris when she knew he had been defeated by Alto, which embarrassed her. Since his familiar was just a dinosaur and not a dragon, she continued to beat him up and got him out of the dragon riders. Alto heard Rex was sent to the hospital and visited him. Alto realized what had happened as soon as he headed to the dueling platform with Vermal. Chris confronted them. Chris gave Alto a chance to return from the duel, but they were determined to fight her. Chris summoned her familiar as Dragon. Simultaneously, Alto increased his mana. Alto launched his crystal attack, which impressed Chris, but she could stop him with one blast of her magic. She shot again, and Vermal was forced to block her attack. Alto tried to counterattack and launched a barrage of large crystals at Chris. The attack landed, and there was a huge explosion. Alto is relieved it's over, but riding her dragon, Chris rises boasts that dragons are the greatest creatures and all others are inferior. Chris commanded fireballs from above toward them while Vermal continued to protect Alto and told him to build up his mana, determined to prove Chris wrong. While Chris destroyed him, Alto used the crystal shards with Vermal to jump at Chris before Chris could react. In the end, Alto won the duel. <gasps> Alto became popular with the girls, causing Lilia to become increasingly jealous. Chris met with Rex, and he was surprised she did her own job. Chris apologizes to him, but Rex is surprised to hear such words from her. Rex takes over the task, and the two make up. At night, Vermal tries to seduce Alto again, but he says one should only kiss someone they love. So Vermal says she really loves Alto. The next day, Alto is worried while Vermal looks refreshed. Alto remembers Vermal telling him she loves him, and his face turns red. Sees Professor Obsidian and asks if demons can fall in love with humans. Obsidian tells him that demons only want humans for their mana. After that, Alto asks if Vermal only loves him for his mana. Vermal proves herself, kisses him without sucking his mana, and says she likes Alto. On the other hand, Obsidian meets a female student in private. She tells him she loves him, and Obsidian hugs her, but he holds a suspicious-looking syringe. The girl is later found frozen in her room, rescued but left in a coma. The student council investigates the attack. Vice President Ryuga Shinauji and Executive Jessica Schwartz discuss the incident, revealing this is the fourth incident where a student went into a coma. On the other hand, Alto is assigned to write a report on their familiar. Lilia is outside her room with Cheryl's. Lilia has another invisibility potion and a copy of Alto's key. She left her clothes with Cheryl's and sneaked into the boy's dormitory. She unlocked Alto's door and snuck into his room. Alto walked towards her, causing her to panic, but he only picked up a book. In his search for the right book, Alto touched Lilia without realizing it, leaving her stunned. Mm, これだこれだ Alto finishes his report by listing the things that Vermal likes. At the same time, Chris and her dragon are defeated by a seemingly possessed Rex and his mutated dinosaurs. Then, the flashback to when Rex first summons his familiar egg. He was overjoyed by its size and even caught the attention of young Chris. That's when they became friends. Alto and Vermal were shopping for groceries when suddenly they were interrupted by Rex's brother, who panicked and begged them for help. Chris continues to be beaten by Rex. She tries to fight back by shooting fireballs at him. But Rex holds back the fire as his body begins to mutate. Alto and Vermal arrive and tell him to let go. 
Rex throws Chris aside and decides to get back at Alto for hitting him earlier. Rex's power goes wild, and Vermal recognizes something about his power. Alto's hands glow as Vermal prepares to fight, but student council president Alina arrives with her sword familiar. She gives Rex a few slashes. Alina knocked them down and destroyed their mutation. Stop. Chris rushed over to Rex as he lay unconscious. Three days later, the student council held a meeting and noted this as the fifth incident they suspected someone was responsible for using drugs or black magic on students. Meanwhile, Alto and Lilia were informed about their upcoming exam for the bronze rank. Vermal told Alto that she was tired and was returning to the dorm. Lilia took this opportunity to be alone with Alto, using studying as an excuse. <laughs> As Vermal walks back to the dormitory, she encounters Professor Obsidian. Vermal called him out because he was the culprit behind the incident. Obsidian pretends that he didn't do it. Vermal mentioned how she could smell a low-level demon on him. She warned him that he should stop what he was doing, and if he were to hurt Alto, then Vermal would kill him. Vermal continues to walk away, and as the paper doll floats, suddenly, Obsidian appears behind her and injects her with his syringe. Vermal starts to feel pain, and the dark energy gets out of control. Suddenly, Alto feels a stabbing pain as his hand starts to glow. A huge explosion outside, and Alto realizes Vermal is in trouble and rushes to find her. Everyone around the school notices a wave of dark energy. The sky turns dark, and Alina rushes to the scene, but she finds the paper doll. It keeps multiplying and merging to form a creature that says it can't let her pass, while Vermal has turned into an unstoppable winged demon. Obsidian used his magic and wrapped a magical chain around Vermal's neck to control her. When Alto and Lilia arrived, Obsidian showed them his control over Vermal, which made her kneel. Alto was horrified at the sight, and Obsidian boasted that he was the one who attacked people and injected them with demonic essence to try to turn them into demons. Feeling that he would lose Vermal, Alto became angry, and a blast of magic energy was sent to Vermal. Vermal suddenly broke the chain and attacked Obsidian, but Alto got in the way and was impaled by her claws. As a result, Vermal turned into a more ferocious form. She attacked Obsidian again, but she was stopped by Alto once more. <laughs> Alto calmed her down, and Vermal cried and returned to her original form. When Alto died, Vermal immediately kissed him, and it healed the hole in his chest. Obsidian got weird at the turn of events, injected himself with the formula, and turned into a monstrous demon. He attacked with a drill punch, but Vermal hit back and blew half of his body away with one punch. Obsidian was surprised by her power and left his body to escape, but Chris blasted him on her dragon. In the end, Vermal punched him, knocking him back to the ground, and his demonic body faded away. Moments later, Alto regained consciousness, and Lilia cried thankfully that he was okay. At the same time, the monster Alina fought decided to retreat and said they would meet again. Vermal apologized to Alto for killing him. Vermal sadly explained that she had healed Alto by giving him a demon heart and connecting their life force. So if one of them died, the other would die, too. Now Alto's heart also needs Vermal's mana to function. Vermal began to be cold towards Alto because her monster form made her feel inappropriate to be next to Alto. Alto gets angry, says he doesn't care, and kisses Vermal. Alto declares he is unafraid, and they will be together forever. Realizes that Alto loves her, and she blushes. The previous incident made Lilia already know that Vermal was a demon. Vermal apologized for lying and felt bad that Alto was hurt because of her. But Lilia didn't care that she was a demon because she wasn't evil, and her feelings for Alto were real. Lilia consoles her and says she trusts Alto to care for Vermal if she gets out of control again. Vermal returns to Alto's room and apologizes to him again, but Alto is relieved he feels better and the two make up and kiss. The next day, Vermal gets a uniform, but it doesn't fit. On the other hand, in the church, there is a platinum mage named Helioter and a former platinum mage, Iolite, using one of the paper dolls to communicate and small talk about Obsidian's failure. At school, all the boys stare at Vermal's new look, and the boys praise Alto for bringing her back to class. Suddenly, the student council comes to class, and Alto and Vermal are detained. Alto is worried that they discovered that Vermal is a demon, and he asks why they are being detained. Alina apologizes for not being able to help during their fight against Obsidian. But the reason they were holding Alto together with Vermal was not that but something more serious.
隠していることはありませんか Suddenly, Alina asks if they are hiding a secret, and Alto has no choice but to admit that Vermal is a demon and their life force is related. They are surprised by that, but Alto claims Vermal is not evil and is ready to protect her at any costs. Jessica thinks Vermal is too dangerous, while Alina believes in Alto and decides to help keep his secret, noting that she could easily kill Alto. <laughs> Then Alina invited Alto to become an executive in the student council. Alto thought she just wanted to keep an eye on him, but Alina reminded him how he could beat Chris in a duel. Alto accepted her offer and told his friends about it. Hearing this, they were surprised Marcus was proud of him, and Lilia congratulated him. Alto becomes worried now that more and more people know Vermal's identity. He wants to become stronger so that he can protect her. Vermal warns Alto to be careful around the student council, suspecting that Alina may not be an ordinary human. The next day, Alto attends his first council meeting but accidentally sees the girls changing clothes. Jessica was frightened and wanted to punish Alto, but Alina said it was their fault for not locking the door. After that, Alina shows them a piece of paper that is the creature she fought. Chris tried to examine it, but Alina explained that it contained a very advanced magical formula. So, the gold level mage team could not decipher it and concluded that their enemy was at the platinum level. Iolite and Helioter meanwhile met with platinum sorcerer Kohakumia. They had given her demon parts for her experiments. Iolite complains about the hassle of getting the parts, but he still has work to do. Iolite tells Helioter that they are going after Alto and Vermal. Alto dreams of a young Vermal crying in a ruined city. He comes before a woman who tells him to choose between helping humanity or destruction but saving Vermal. He suddenly wakes up looking shaken. He goes to study, feeling worried about the upcoming bronze exam. The next day, Alto gathered his things for the exam. He saw the book that Vermal used to seal. Alto hurriedly took the book with him. Lilia felt they were starting to stand out from the other school students, because their academy was one of the most prestigious. The students gathered in the hall for the practical exam. There was a large crystal ball with fire inside. The examiner told them that this was a test to measure their mana, and all they had to do was pour their mana into the fire and strengthen it. The first student was called, but he failed to affect the flame. The next student, with a ferocious bear familiar, tried it but also failed. Now it was Lilia's turn, and she showed them how it was done. She focused on the flame, not on the crystal, and easily enlarged the flame. One of the other students was able to do the same well. After this, Cheryl's, along with Marcus, successfully passed the test. Alto was the last student. He analyzed the crystal and found it easier to supply mana from behind. The examiner was impressed that Alto knew the real test of the test. Vermal suggested Alto to show off, and he agreed. Alto chose the most difficult place to supply mana. He poured his mana, creating a huge fire that turned into silver. The testers were shocked, and Alto continued to enlarge the fire until the crystal cracked and shattered completely. Alto became embarrassed and apologized for breaking the crystal, but the examiner told him that he passed with full marks. The examiner knew that the crystal would be difficult to break even with platinum level mages. Getting ready for the written exam, Vermal pulled Alto aside to help replenish his mana, but this almost made it too late. On the other hand, Iolite killed a student from another school and stole his ticket to sneak into the exam. Alto rushes to the exam and makes it just in time. When Alto found his seat, Iolite unexpectedly sat beside him and wished him good luck. Alto started taking the exam but became distracted when he realized Iolite had fallen asleep. Alto tried to ignore him and focus on the exam. He noticed that the questions were harder than in previous years. Iolite finally wakes up and quickly finishes the exam in seconds. He looks at Alto, mocking him for being slow. They are reprimanded for talking, but Iolite doesn't care. Suddenly, a guard rushes over to report the body of the student killed by Iolite. They realize that Iolite was not a real student. Iolite summoned a giant stone golem. He says he took the test for fun and reveals that he is after Alto. Alto realizes that Iolite is the one working with Obsidian. The previous tester breaks in and saves the professor. Vermal jumps through the window, attacking with her demonic magic, but the golem blocks her. 
It was revealed that Iolite was the youngest mage to be platinum rank and was called the strongest mage. Lilia and the others tried to help them, but they found that the building was protected by magic that Heliodor used to prevent them. Iolite transformed his golem, giving it many cannons. Alto tried to attack, but the golem blocked all their attacks. The building was destroyed, and Vermal was captured. Alto became angry, and his golden mana began to glow around him. He unleashed an incredible attack, destroying the golem with a single strike. Alto became a Super Saiyan, vowing to protect Vermal at all costs. Iolite is forced to summon his knight and manages to stab Alto. Iolite revealed his plan to use Vermal's demonic powers to destroy the world. Alto became furious, and at the same time, Vermal transformed into her demonic form. However, Vermal was chained by magic. With this magic, Iolite could seal her powers, returning her to human form. Iolite decided to finish off Alto, but the book Vermal had sealed blocked the attack. A woman appeared that Alto saw in his dream. She was the early mage and the one who sealed Vermal. The witch immediately sent Alto into Vermal's memories. He found himself 550 years ago and saw a child version of Vermal. Mage explains that Vermal was raised by a nun with a few other people. They lived together like a family, and Vermal was glad they knew she was a demon but loved her anyway. One day, the people discovered that Vermal was a demon and blamed her for the plague that affected the town. So, they laid siege to the church. Her sister told her to run away, and she almost left town, but Vermal heard people saying they would kill her family. Vermal ran back, but it was too late, and she found that her family had all been hanged. She was devastated and angry until she entered her demon form for the first time. Ultimately, Vermal killed everyone and burned the town to the ground, leaving only a giant crater. Alto was shocked by what he saw. The mage said this was her crime and why she was sealed away. Alto finds he can interact with Vermal and comfort her. She turns into her adult self and cries that her crimes can never be forgiven. But Alto tells her he doesn't care and will always be by her. They kiss, and the chains break as Alto declares he loves her. In the real world, Iolite summons another golem who merges him with his knight. Iolite said that the only reason for Vermal's existence was to destroy the world. But Alto told him to shut up, saying Iolite didn't know about the real Vermal. Alto combined his powers with Vermal and launched his crystal attack. It collided with the golem's attack and destroyed it. Iolite was not expecting that. He started to get more serious and prepared his magic, but was stopped when the Heliodor appeared from the portal. Heliodor said that she could not maintain the space warp any longer. Iolite is disappointed but has no choice but to leave. He tells Alto that he will return one day to finish their fight. The early mage reappears, surprising Alto. She calls Vermal a good friend and urges Alto to care for her. She says goodbye and repairs the building before disappearing. Lilia rushes to Alto, glad he is okay. A few days later, Alto trains to become stronger so he can protect Vermal. Alto practiced swordplay with Jessica and martial arts with Chris. He lost to both of them but aimed to improve himself even more. Vermal thanks Alto for accepting her and tells him she loves him too. Alto is happy and they hug. The next day, in the student council meeting, Alina says that after the recent incident, they must protect the students and work together to stop attacks. Despite knowing that they are facing the Platinum Mage, they all agree. Lilia Marcus and Cheryl celebrate that they all pass the bronze rank exam. But when Alto doesn't show up, Lilia jealously suspects he's doing something with Vermal. However this story ends, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.